Hi, I'm Ernie. And I'm Ben. And this is Budget Nerds. Who is all in your mind? You are not alone. No, you are not. Welcome back to the show, friends. If our faces look beet red, it's because we just botched like five <laughs> intros in a row. We were laughing. Yeah, we we sound so cool. Like we get it done first time. Yeah, we just keep messing up. It's it's great. Yeah. But. So I'm sweating. My face is red, but uh, I'm really <laughs> excited crying. for this episode. Uh, ben and I are going to take you into our wish farm. So we're going to talk through yeah. our wish list, things that we are saving for. Really excited for this. We're also going to share the wish list of some of our team members. They were excited to share those items with us. So I think this will be another nerdy episode and probably the best place to start, especially for those that may be new to YNAB, new to the channel. What is a wish farm? What is a wish list? Let's dive into that. Yeah. So stuff on the wish list are, uh, well, first they're optional things. So like your car maintenance or your taxes on your house or something that's not going to be included in the wish list. This is fun stuff, optional stuff, and it's usually stuff that's going to take at least 2 months to save for, right? So, it's a uh, bigger things, but not necessarily bigger things. Sometimes it's it's pretty small things. And the idea that we have uh in Wineab is to create a category group called wish list and you just write down anything that anything that meets your fancy, anything that you just that you just want to write down that you want. And then you also have what we call a wish farm. And the wish farm is a limited space. There's only space for three categories. One should be something small that you're saving for, probably only going to take two or three months to save up for. Uh, the other should be medium, a little bit bigger. And the other should be large. So it might take like a year to save for or something like that, right? And you define what that means for you. But the idea is you're always saving for something little that you can get quickly, something that you will take a little bit longer and something that's going to take something big that's going to take a long time. And that way you kind of always have money for all those kind of kind of categories because it's real easy. You know, you can you could want like lots of little things and never get to that big thing. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a way to give space to all those all those things. I, now, do you do a wish farm in, 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 in your budget, Ernie, or? What do you do? I do. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I want to say before I get into that actual list, I I love the idea. Even though I'm not a great wish farmer, I love the idea of a wish farm, a wish list, because it gets at the heart of this, of the truth, I guess, that budget budgeting doesn't have to be restrictive, mm, right? Yeah. You get to save and spend for fun things. I mean, that's the whole purpose of a budget, align your money with your priorities. And so, you know, of course you have to set aside money and pay for the necessities and then start saving for those true expenses. But after that, you know, if you start finding, Hey, I have a little bit of leftover, then start putting it towards those, those wish list items. Now exactly. my yeah. actual wish list, I don't have one in YNAB. So it's too many categories, right? You like to keep yeah. your, your budget all nice and neat. Right? I already I get feel that. like I have I enough that. categories. I mean, I'm 50, 55 plus. And so mm -hmm. I did, I had a wish farm and it had, it contained the three items that I was currently saving for. And then I had this wish list and basically every time, you know, something caught my eye or I'm like, Oh, I, I could, I definitely want something like that. I would add it to the wish list and this list got huge. Yeah. And I don't know, that was a little overwhelming. Plus none of my categories were really attracting any money. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, Okay. And I'm thinking, I, I don't remember specifically why, but I think it's because it was, this was years ago and Christy and I both would receive very small amounts of, of monthly spending money. Right. And so I was right, probably blowing right. that on, you know, Starbucks and Chipotle. Right. <laughs> Didn't have anything to say for anything cool. Yeah, I totally get you. Yeah. I, I do have a wish list in my budget. That's pretty long, but I feel like I want to keep it in Todoist or something like that instead because it's just, I don't know. I don't like having a ton of categories, especially ones that I don't really want anymore because sometimes you'll put something on the wish list. It'll just kind of hang out there and never makes it into the wish farm and actually starts getting funded for like a year or more. And it's just kind of like, eh, 
you know, I don't really want it. So I think maybe it's good to go and like kind of curate that list every once in a while and get rid of things. But yeah, I'm not sure I want it in my budget. I might keep it elsewhere. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe moving that. I mean, you but can. It is a good way to do it. You can you know, collapse the group in right. both the and mobile I, I and the web. Collapse. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Now you can do it on mobile too. Yeah. And I, so I do keep it. I keep it at the bottom of the budget. I keep it collapsed, but. I don't know. For some reason, it just kind of bothers me a little bit having all those unfunded categories that I'm just not even thinking about. Yeah, but um, but it is out of sight, so it's not that big a deal. Well, let's walk through how I manage mine now. So I keep all my wish list items in my head. You know, for okay. some reason that works. Um, probably because the well, list good, is really small. You, well, if you like, if you stop wanting something, it just falls out of your head, right? So you, it's just automatically curated list for you. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. And then as far as the saving goes, I just have one category for myself. And actually, Christy does my wife as well. So we just have, you know, Ernie spending, Christy spending. And so we give ourselves a little bit more than we used to, which is nice. And uh, yeah, when I really want something, then I just make sure to not spend much money from that category each month until I can get to a place where I have the available funds. Yeah, you know, we do that kind of thing, too. Uh, we actually have a category called Katie budgets and a category group called Ben budgets. And those don't get funded every month, but we do fund the personal spending categories. And if you want to like save up for something that's just for you, then you could put it in your, in your own little category group and set the money aside there. Uh, Caitlin, my wife has quite a few of them, actually. I only have a couple, but yeah. So, so if you, if we're doing like individual, spending or individual saving i guess for something that it's only for us we would just move it from our personal spending to those categories that's how we handle that okay well should we get into what the actual what's actually on the list now that'd be pretty fun huh yeah let's do it let's do it do you want to start or should i i'll start um okay. so i i have a little bit of a i have an interesting setup so i did the wish farm thing for a little while where i literally only had three categories then i started expanding a little bit and i have a, I have a few different things so i don't follow it exactly um but i actually have two well i'll talk about what i'm actually funding right now uh and then i'll talk about what is on the wish list uh but i actually have two category groups one's called funded goals like uh, just goals that are actually funded, right? And then I have a category called goals. Those are the ones that I'm, I'm, I'm saving up for right now. Because a lot of times I've noticed, you know, we'll save up for something and then the money will just kind of sit there for a little while while we shop, you know? Like yeah. I set aside a, a good amount of money for a new refrigerator because we've talked about that quite a bit, right? But I just don't know yet exactly which refrigerator i want and i'm one of those people who likes to shop to death and get exactly the right one okay so the money might just hang out there for a couple months while i kind of figure it out you know so i like to keep that separated so it's kind of fun because i have the goals category group and when that thing is fully funded i'll move it over into the funded goals group and it hangs out there until we actually spend the money that's very disciplined of you and i have to imagine there are times where you sit on that cash for a little and then you change your mind. So now yeah, you have all it, this money for something else. Well, like here's an example. Um, we have a category called massage for Katie because Kaylee needed to go get a massage. That's what we wanted to do. Right. And we set aside $130 for that. Cause like it'd be like a hundred bucks for a massage or so. And then like a tip. Right. But then Katie found out that there's actually a massage school there's like a hair, there's like a hair school, you know, you can go get like, she goes and gets perms there. Yep. We have the and same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Discounted. And it's cheaper. Yeah. And you say like, oh, are you, do you really want a student like working on your hair or something? But like, I think they're actually more thorough because they're practicing and they have supervision, you know? So like it's cheaper. So she goes and does that. It takes a long time though. Like it takes like twice as long because for her to get like a perm or something like that. But Anyway, she found out that they also do massages because they so they are also a massage school. So she went there and it only cost 50 bucks. Um, I'm not sure how much she added tips. She literally just went and I saw I literally before we started, I saw it show up there. But I think it's basically half the price. And so now she's probably going to be able to go get two massages. So I think that's just going to hang out in that category for a little while. <laughs> and, and you can do that. Nice. But then sometimes that happens. Like we fund something and then I just I just don't spend it, which it's like, actually, I don't really want it anymore. Because I'm the opposite. 
as soon as that money's oh, yeah. there, I'm out and buying that thing. And sometimes that bites <laughs> me. I mean, just this happened recently where uh, I decided I want to buy a lawn leveling tool because I'm a lawn nerd. Uh. And there's some areas of my lawn that are uneven, bumpy, and I wanted a tool to help level them out. And so there's one that I've been watching nice. and I've been watching my budget, trying to get enough money. Then I asked for it. Okay. How about I get this for my birthday? But then it went on sale, like a really good sale. And I looked oh, at my budget. Nice. I'm like, okay. I have this. And then that would free up something else I could get for my birthday. And I just bought it on a whim. Well, that's that's great, though. But now I mean, that I have it, been saving for it, you could do it. I, I used it for a little lawn leveling project. And as soon as I used it, I'm like, boy, <laughs> this I, isn't as great. As I, I, I really didn't need this. I could have bought <laughs> something for a quarter of the price. Very similar. That would have done the same job. So. Yeah, but well, that's the thing with saving up for stuff rather than like buying it on credit, you know, is it gives you some time to actually decide if you really want that. Yeah, thing. And I think that's, you know, because otherwise, you know, imagine if you you bought that, you know, you went to Home Depot or something and, and got it with, a, you know, four payments or something like that. Oh, my goodness. And you would have the regret <laughs> and the debt, you know, <laughs> it just so. makes me so angry. <laughs> right. I've had things like that happen to me. Like I wanted to buy a, a, a chainsaw. And I, but it wasn't really attracting money, you know, like because yep. you only use it occasionally when like a tree falls. Um, and I was talking to a buddy about it and he was like, oh, also, he's like, well, don't just get the chainsaw, but you also got to get chaps, you know, those like leg things. So you don't like cut your legs off because it's dangerous. You got to have a helmet with ear protection and all that, all that nonsense. And I'm like, OK, this is getting like twice as expensive as I thought it was. <laughs> so I was complaining to me more. And he was like, well, hey, you have a really nice leaf blower and I need a leaf blower. So, and I have a chainsaw, so how about you can borrow my chainsaw anytime you want if I can borrow your leaf blower anytime I want. And I was like, sweet. So like, if you just wait, if, but if I had just gone to the place and, 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 and financed it, you know, I wouldn't have even found out that opportunity. So yeah, yeah, it, it's good to kind of wait a little while and fun things. And even if you have the cash, I mean, there, yeah, that that's, that's cool that you do that. I need more of that in my life. Well, sometimes it's not even just because I'm. I'm researching sometimes it's like it actually takes a while like we are doing a big redecoration kind of thing of our down we have like this playroom downstairs okay. it's like this big room and it's just well it's bad it's it's very unpleasant to be down there because we have this old couch that's like ripped to shreds because the kids are just you know kids are kids, kids, kids yep. couches right and it's this old nasty carpet and it's just it's just not a pleasant place to be uh, so we actually, we, we, I felt very fancy, Ernie. We actually like hired an interior decorator person Whoa. to come and like give us some advice. She's great. Leveling She's up. Best. I know. Right. And she gave us all this advice and she was like, well, we can do like an HGTV thing where you guys like go away for a weekend and we do it all <laughs> like furniture, carpet, paint, like totally redo it and then you can come back and have a big reveal and i'm like i want that yes <laughs> right please so obviously all of this is pretty expensive so we've we saved for it for oh gosh like a like a year or so and now we're just now it's just like sitting there funded because we're waiting for them to have time like you have to schedule it and you know it's whole thing so it's just kind of hanging out there for a while but it's yeah it's, that's one thing that's on my list that i'm pretty excited about um, and that was one of the biggest things we wanted to do after paying off the house because we had put off so many home improvement things we wanted to do. So those are the big items on my list. There's a lot of home improvement stuff. Okay. Um, okay, I mentioned the refrigerator. That's a big one because it's still leaking water, and I'm pretty sure I'm oh, the, doing damage to my floors. The leak doesn't <laughs> fix itself, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Sometimes it goes away for a while. <laughs> Oh, uh, brother. Anyways, I think as it gets hotter, it gets worse. So, yeah, we actually had the money funded for that. Uh, so, but actually, the, okay, I can't, I can't, I know. I promise I'm going to talk about my categories. <laughs> I keep I keep going off on tangents. I hope you guys don't mind. It, here's the funny thing uh, about another, and it's another good thing about saving up for these things. Uh, so we had saved for quite a few expensive things like that playroom redecoration the refrigerator right and so we had that money hanging out until we were ready to spend it at the end of may my wife was laid off from her job 
And so we had our income drop by like seven, 60, 70 percent. Right. So it was a big, big drop. And so, you know, we went into like full on, you know, budget mode. We like cut the budget in all these ways. And one thing I did was I took all that money that we've been saving and I just brought it up to a new category. I put it into my income replacement category, my my prudent reserve. Right. <laughs> there it is. Which is which it's an emergency fund, right? So I put all that money into the emergency fund and it like more than doubled what I had in the emergency fund. So it was really cool because uh, I, I, you know, when I've done this analysis, like sometimes I do things like this where I'm like, well, what if, what if Caitlin lost her job? What would, or if, what if I lost my job or something like that? What would happen? Right. And I've made budgets for it and I'm like, oh, we could last for six months, you know, on this or something. But I didn't even account for all these things we've been saving for that I'm, I'm going to hang on to cash when we're, when we've lost a job. Right. So I moved that money and it's like, oh, we're, we're good. She also got some severance too. So we're good for like two years. Like if we sit on this like reduced, very reduced budget, uh, we could hang out for a while because you're also giving money away. We're investing. I pause those things too. So like, yeah, like we could hang out for a while. And so it it changed everything because Caitlin was like, oh, like I can take my time. Like I can find the right and like you know she's doing interviews and she doesn't like she's not desperate you know what i mean <laughs> like there's all these things and so it was actually a real blessing that we had that money just hanging out in the budget because when a crisis came it kind of supplemented our emergency fund and we could actually hang out for a while um but she found a new job she's starting on monday awesome cool new company so yeah it's going to be going to be pretty cool it actually w- worked out really well and we have a budget meeting set soon to move that money back to these awesome goals (laughs) so that's pretty exciting so the wish Uh, farm will start growing and sprouting once again it's it will indeed yeah so let me actually okay enough rigmarole let me actually get in here (laughs) all right so we have the refrigerator the playroom redecorate bathroom renovation that's a that's even bigger than the playroom redecoration because anytime we start talking about bathrooms or kitchens, it's like real expensive. Um, <laughs> uh, have you heard of a Vitamix blender? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Caitlin wants one of those because we make uh, like these green smoothies that have like tr- truckloads of vegetables in it, but they're kind of chunky right now. You know, it's like not the most pleasant thing in the world. It's very good for you. But I think if we had a Vitamix, it would be like smoother. So that's, that's the, that's the idea. We want to use that. So set money aside for that. I actually have it in my budget as Vita, Vita meat, Vita meat of Vitamix. Because do you remember that old, I love Lucy episode when she was, you know what I'm talking about? No, not, no. not ringing a bell. No. <laughs> All right. Well, there's this old, I, I love I Lucy episode story. where she's doing a commercial for this. <laughs> This is a hot, it's a deep cut here. This, she's doing this commercial for this like uh, uh like supplement for um some kind of like a like a dietary supplement, and it's called Vita Mita Vitamix. <laughs> and it's very funny because I guess back then those supplements had a little bit of alcohol in them back in the day. Okay. And so she's constantly having to eat this for the commercial, and she just basically gets completely drunk and she's like trying to say Vita Mita Vitamix. It's very funny. Yeah, okay. Look it up. It's great. So I put it in there as that because it just made me think of uh think of that I Love Lucy sketch. So there you go. Well, so your, those are the big things we're working on. Your right category now. names are always the best. You know, the, the actual words <laughs> combined with the emojis, top notch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we also have a few categories for some trips we're taking. We're going to do a little summer trip at the end of August. Just like just like a weekend to, to the beach with the kids. Okay. Um, I have what we call, I'm calling a Gatlinburg friendship trip because two other couples that are friends of mine uh we're gonna go on a friendship trip we're leaving the kids behind we have to take the baby but we're leaving the other kids behind and we're going to gatlinburg we're gonna have fun so that's exciting that'd be fun to do that without trip yeah just to stay connected and yeah it's really great because one of those couples moved away not very far but like a couple hours away so just wanted to stay connected with them so we're gonna go on a trip wow so that's pretty fun you're good at and i'm going to a wedding thing I know, right? It's pretty legit. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. And then I'm going to a wedding in October. So okay, got to save some money for that. So 
yeah, those are the things that I'm saving for right now. And then I have a whole gigantic wish list that I could do a lightning round. But why don't I hear about some of yours right now? All right. So I shared the lawn leveling tool, just bought that. The other thing that I just recently bought is, well, it wasn't with all of my money, but it was some of it was uh, tickets to an NFL Vikings game. So NFL oh, is nice. like everything yes. in, in my family. And that sounds I, like a blast. I don't know how it started, but it became a thing where, you know, once my boys turned 13, I would take them to an NFL game. And so okay. uh, Simeon turned 13 last year, but we got a year behind because of COVID. So last year was Manny. Yeah. And this year okay. I get to bring Simeon to a game. And so really excited about that. And so I just bought those tickets. We are going to Vikings nice. Cardinals at the end of October in Minneapolis. And so yes, that's so much fun. Yeah, that. it, that's where it's like you just I don't know, buying that stuff. Yes, NFL games are very expensive, but I'm like, this is we're mm-hmm. both so excited and can't wait. I mean, even if you're not that into sports, like I like sports, I'm not like super into sports. But like there's something really special about going to like a big stadium where there's all the people there and there's all this energy. And yeah. It's just so fun. It yeah. is an experience. Really yeah. yeah. So after the lawn leveling tool in the Vikings game, my <laughs> my category is at an all time low. Like I, can, oh. I last night I brought up my category and Christie's category and I showed her the difference. I mean, over a thousand dollars difference. Like she is just saving like crazy. Oh, she just saving, saving, saving. And, and you're just spending, spending, spending. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've been spending so much. So I'm just, you know, running on fumes at this point. So these things I'm going to be listing, I can't envision getting them anytime soon. So I'll start with the, the big, and I don't have many. So again, I'm just kind of keeping a few of these in my head. The big item is new golf clubs. And I'm not even trying oh, to nice. save for those because I know eventually I want to get back into the game, but it's not going to be anytime Mm -hmm. soon. So I'm just not taking that seriously, but it is always in the back of my head that eventually I'm going to get a new set of golf clubs and I'm going to get back into golfing medium, a travel suitcase. So actually I think I'm going to end up getting this for my birthday. So if any ops specialists uh, are watching this episode on the YNAB, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a, a they do card. get birthday presents. Usually they have to like call your significant other to like ask what they want. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a whole thing. So they I do so much work to get us gifts. It's so nice. And uh, yeah, I've been traveling enough lately where I'm like, okay, I need to invest because up to this point, I've been just traveling with my backpack, like all my clothes in one backpack, everything in one backpack. And it gets really heavy. <laughs> and I'm just like, I need a better right. way of traveling. So I look forward to that. Ooh, next one. Super excited for this. This is probably going to happen next year. High quality grass seed. Again, I'm a lawn nerd. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just going to buy any grass seed. Because I always do an overseeding project every fall where I just reseed my lawn. And I'm done yeah. with the big box store seed. And so I've been venturing okay. out into these okay. premium seeds. And my goodness, they make a difference. And so really huge. So it's difference. like the same species of grass, but it's like better seeds, I guess. Y- yeah, better cultivars. And cultivars. And I think that's <laughs> the, the official word. name. Like that's oh, okay. the industry name. Wording. I see. It's like it's like grass fed beef <laughs> instead of like <laughs> exactly like but there organic is a, there is a difference. I mean, it's it's I can see that it's yeah. more resistant to disease. Mm. Uh, it's more oh, drought so it's like, tolerant. It's more shade it's tolerant. Like yeah. So carefully. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. I, I mean, I, I did the lawn with uh, a premium seed last year. Huge difference. I'm going to even, you know, go up a level with some better seed next year, hopefully. Mm-hmm. So that's on the wish list. Nice. Love it. And then the small scale item or this, the small one is a food scale that I use to measure my coffee every morning. I do, I do a pour over and my buttons are starting to break and it's just not working real well. So I think eventually Mm -hmm. I'll have to replace that. I had that happen with my food scale. It just like stopped working one day and yeah, that went on the wish farm too. So I'm right there with you, man. I can go on a little rant. I, I, I watch the great British baking show. Right. And they, 
every everywhere else except for in the states here apparently or in north america they measure their ingredients like by using or by weight instead of by volume okay you know, you ever know, like you were watching. I, like, I watch that show them. all the time with Christy, but well, it's great because they put the a, they put a bowl on the on the scale, and then you can just pour the ingredients in until you get to the right weight, and then you can just zero it out and pour another one. And it's like they don't have to have like all these stinking little measuring tools, but you can't do it here in the states because like all the all the recipes are in by volume. Anyways, it just I'm just interesting. Well, I'm going to start paying attention to that way. If you guys know a way, help me out how I can like convert these <laughs> things to to weight. That'd be great. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, anything else you got on your list? Well, there? you mentioned uh, the bathroom renovation. And yeah. we're saving for the same thing, but actually ours is a, a true expense. And so again, oh, there's no okay. right or wrong way there. But I, as you were Makes talking, sense. I was like, you know what? That actually is more of a wish farm thing so i mean i don't know i I can see an argument for making it a true expense because you know the houses the houses fall apart you know like they need to be kept up so it's kind of well what has me going back and forth is we're not completely dialed in that that's what we want to do with that money because we've Mm -hmm. talked about maybe doing something outside with a deck or in a hot tub you know, so I feel like, it, you know, if it's in the budget as a true expense or, you know, something like that, then, you know, exactly. Yeah, this is what I'm saving for. But mm-hmm. maybe there's more wiggle room with a wish list item. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Is that the biggest, the biggest goal? That is the biggest right one. Now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Anytime you talk about home renovations, it's, <laughs> it gets expensive. Yep. Actually, I, I'm not sure this is. This is more of a true expense. I think the biggest one is probably a new roof I'm saving for. That's a, well, that is a true that is expense. a true expense, have right? It, you have to have eventually do that. Yeah, you know, it really it probably should be under. Well, I, I call it non monthly. It was, it's like so epically non monthly. <laughs> I always feel like it doesn't. But it, it's it's. I don't know. I have it under goals, but yeah, I have a target on that. For I think I started that like like three years ago i set a target for april 2024 to save ten thousand dollars for a new roof right (laughs) so i have to set aside like 150 bucks a month for that yeah and i mean it's great honestly i love it because i think we had some like just like some some people come by to do like some repairs and they're like i asked them i was like how long do you think we have on this roof and they were like i think you have like six to eight years and that was like two or three years ago okay so i set the category and it, it's great. I mean, I love it. Well, you might want to so. get a new estimate. That price might have tripled. <laughs> by- oh, that's actually <laughs> that's a really that's a oh gosh, you're <laughs> that's a really good point. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, because well, it's it's yeah, it's it's a really simple roof. Uh, it's just like a frame, you know, nothing complicated. But uh, so it is cheaper than most. But yeah, I should probably look into that again because it'd be a pretty big bummer to save for <laughs> six or seven years and then realize I just yeah that is a, a downside for these really long category these long targets that's it that's true yeah <laughs> sorry if i put a damper on your future budget meeting oh, it's day all right with, with it's all right that's okay it's 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 all important you know at least it would be better if it is twice as much hey we'd be better off we're halfway there so okay you no know, that's good well um should we yeah. walk through some of the team members Wishlist items? Yes. All right, that'd Let's be fun. Because, man, we work with a lot of really interesting people who have a lot of interesting items they, they brought up. So let's bring that up. All right. So let's just like lightning around this, Ernie. Uh, Renee says a play structure for her kids. So like a cool playground put in the backyard. Emily says a dog. Love it. Lauren D, my dream garden and greenhouse to grow all the veggies. Love it. Love it. Uh, Sasha says... A new Billy Corgan signature Z1 guitar for the hubby. That is very specific. Yes. <laughs> she knows exactly what she's getting. Yeah, she's not going to need to let that money sit in that category for a long time. <laughs> as soon as it's fun, she knows exactly what to get. Uh, and a freelance developmental editor for my novel manuscript. That's cool, Sasha. KDN, that. I am four months away from ordering a Tesla. Couldn't have done it without nice. YNAB. Very cool. 
<laughs> Jocelyn, this is so great. Supplies to set up a pond for my ducks because Jocelyn has ducks. I told you these are interesting people. So she needs a duck pond for her ducks. <laughs> I need to talk to Jocelyn. Is she building a pond? I mean, like, I guess so. That's awesome. I actually just started following set up a pond. I just started following a a guy on Twitter who builds ponds and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I am in Matthew, who we've had on the show. A digital piano so I can tickle those ivories. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Yeah, Matthew's. uh, Yeah, you guys guys might not know, but Matthew was on the show before. He's he's quite a uh, quite a musician, actually. Yeah. All right. We got Laura here goes by L dubs tattoos <laughs> she said yes love that and chickens for megan so we got a lot of animal lovers in the in the thread here maria i've been saving for a trip to peru after that i've got targets on portugal and watching a formula one race live ideally with access to the paddock paddock is nice. that something with horses Somebody tell me if you're into formula one or i mean it's normally <laughs> a horse thing right but i, I guess it's just I like know. Behind the scenes, fancy access. That's pretty cool. Oh, more tattoos uh, here. Says, oh, you can take that oh, one. Yeah, finishing up my half sleeve for McKenna. All the all the tattoos. I love Joe's. A snazzy vacuum cleaner. Honestly, <laughs> that's my kind of wish list item right there. They're not all made the same, right? It's so <laughs> true. Hannah's was interesting. So this is Hannah. You know, you, you all know Hannah. A camcorder. We want those authentic family home videos. I actually had a lot of those questions for her because I was like, like, do they sell camcorders? Like, do they sell like tape, tape, like videotape? Yeah, thing. That took you know? me back twenty I'm sure, years. I'm not sure she knew what I meant <laughs> when I asked her about it. She's like, "Oh, we're gonna get a new one." I'm like, "But can you buy? Yeah, you gonna buy one that? on eBay or I got an old one. I'll sell yeah, you, I, Hannah." I think maybe she means like just like a digital uh, camcorder. No, I, I, <laughs> I was think, just thinking. I think, think so? it it's um, nostalgia. Right. It oh, kind of okay. bring back those old days of like dad walking around with that massive box on his the shoulder thing on his shoulder. <laughs> OK, man, you know what? Go for it. Old school school. Cora, we're saving up for a down payment on a house once we move to med school. Nice. Awesome. Uh, Sophia said so Sophia's got a lot Two e-bikes, uh, money for a shade structure and renovation of the backyard. Nice. Uh, a new dining table. A uh, new computer who for Thomas, uh, I guess that, that's uh, her husband there. Um, an iPad Pro for homeschooling. That's that. Yeah, you need makes that. sense. My our iPad was smashed recently um, and that was you know, the kids played Minecraft on there and all that stuff. And I don't want to like go buy a new one because like I feel like there needs to be a consequence. So <laughs> so but it is true. We do need to, maybe I need to add that to the list because I feel like, yeah, that we use it for a lot of things, educational things too. So, um, new tires for the car. That's good. Yeah, so all sorts of things. Blair, I'm saving up for this king sized down comforter. The only way I could stomach pain 500 plus for a comforter is to save up for it over a long period of time. So, I'm giving mm. myself about two years to come up with the funds. I thought that was brilliant, right? Where yeah. sometimes you're like, am I really paying this much money? Let's just extend the time frame. That's a good point. Yeah, like like so this is like a lug like fancy luxury comforter, right? Which is, I think is that's valuable, yeah. right? And yeah, so she, it's, she I I guess Blair was feeling like, "Oh, I just feel like I'm spending so much money on something that I don't have to." But yeah, if you extend the time, then it doesn't feel you don't feel it quite yeah. as much. So, that was cool. It's like the reverse of afterpay. It's like <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like extend the time period that you're funding it rather than paying it off. Uh, Mira said, for me, it's the next charm for my Pandora charm bracelet, where every three months I reward myself for consistently making healthy choices like daily exercising and eating healthily. Oh, that's sweet. I love that. Shannon saving for a trip to Germany. Giant fiddly nice. fig tree slash plant. Is it a it. small tree? Is it a large plant? That was a joke that Hannah made <laughs> in one of her videos. <laughs> Actually, in the <laughs> yes. in the. In the Wish Farm video. Boy, that, that one had me laughing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Driver's Ed, USA Women's National League jersey. Very cool. Cool. Love it. Uh, a dining table without grooves for Caitlin. Okay, what oh, what's going I, on there? Is this I get, kids? I, uh-huh, uh-huh, I get exactly what That's you're what I saying. Like, so I guess there's either, there's either like grooves in the wood grain or there's like grooves between like slats yep. on the table. 
and that's just filling up with crumbs and gunk and it junk gets so disgusting pretty gross man yeah, yeah i have a friend with a table like that and she her and her husband are having like a, a big a big fight about it because she wants to like put epoxy over the whole thing <laughs> okay but it's like really it's like like her dad's a carpenter and she made this he made this like awesome table for them and it's like it's a really nice table so it almost seems like a shame to like put epoxy over the wood but like it's got these slats in between where it's just bad. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's just, it's not great. <laughs> so, it, lots of nasty stuff gets in there. So <laughs> I can see where she's. Megan is saving up for an expedition fund and a ski and sail trip. Megan is do- always doing interesting oh, things. Man. I mean, she was on the podcast. Um, did you hear that this week's yeah, podcast? Yeah, just listen to uh, it today. Yeah. That was excellent. Yeah, that was cool. She's talking about all the cool things she's doing. So what did Jesse interview like? Was it five or six? Yeah, um, five or six people doing like the nomad life. The nomad yeah. life. That's the, the phrase I was looking yeah. for there. By the time you guys actually watch this, that podcast will be like a month old. But uh, you scroll up in the feed. You can, you can hear it. Uh, Heidi says we're saving to start building our house. Nice. Always exciting. Okay. Oh, and Casey has an under desk treadmill. Oh, oh yeah. That? Like a, Is that a mini treadmill well, people- that... <laughs> you run on it. yeah like a mini treadmill uh, for the desk you ever notice like when we're in like company-wide meetings there's some people that are like going like this yeah. you know they're 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 walking and so yeah you, you got like a you can work while you walk oh see i'm just envisioning a standing desk you jack it up as high as it goes and then there's a treadmill underneath mm-hmm. and you're standing on it running underneath your desk oh <laughs> like, no. under, like not like i guess not literally underneath, <laughs> like some of it's sticking out right so you can walk on that part yeah. i assume i don't know i maybe, really maybe, hope maybe, casey is running underneath her desk <laughs> she's like crouched crouched down running through the whole thing <laughs> steph king size bed for steph yes. yes that's huge oh my gosh yeah good I, joke that's huge yeah, i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> It is. It is huge. I I I wouldn't live without a king size bed. Do you, what, what what kind of bed do you have, Ernie? Do you have a, a large one like that or Queen. a smaller one? Queen. Mm, yeah. I don't know. It's gotta gotta go with the king. Oh wow. yeah. All right. Leah is saving for pool slash hot tub, RV camper, nice. lake river camp, beach bay condo, Everest BC excursion. Those are. She said those are the the dream big wish for. Yeah. So those are her like big dreams there love that oh and leah is oh. also saving for a vespa oh i so love that cool. yeah that used the to be vespa on life. my wish list and actually i think it you know, still I is like during it. my retirement years mm-hmm. i was around mm-hmm. town on one i of thought those. about it for a little while actually because like I, you know like it, it, it's just it'd be kind of nice to just be able to like Hop on one of those to go like to the, I don't know, just to go like to a coffee shop or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, it's just kind of cool. Awesome. Well, we would also love to hear what you're saving for. for. So what's on the wish list? What's currently in your wish farm? Definitely sound off in the comments if you're watching the YouTube video. Otherwise, for those listening to the podcast, you can email us budgetnerds at youneedabudget.com. So for now, before we sign off though, want to get into some YNAB wins. I, I think there's been a couple episodes we haven't done those. And so we do have some really cool ones to share. Let's do it. Who's all in your mind? All right. So I have Marie and this is a, a kind of a YNAB wins first because it's not a YouTube comment. Marie actually wrote in to uh, our support channels and uh, over email and let us know this awesome win. So I wanted to wanted to read it. Uh, so she said, I just want to take a moment to thank you profusely for your budget nerd videos and podcast episodes. Thank you. That's so sweet. Uh, I just celebrated two years with YNAB budget this past April, and it's been thrilling and exciting to see it change over the years. The level of nerdiness and enthusiasm in your videos is awesome. It keeps me going and motivated to improve my budget. That just hearing that that's exactly what we want to do. Keep motivated to improve your budget long after anybody in my real life has stopped paying attention to my conversation about budgeting. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yes. So your work at Wine has been helpful, helping me achieve a 20 year old dream of funding horseback riding lessons, all while working a low pay entry level job in the hospitality industry. My biggest budget nerd moments, creating a personalized wine app tutorial for a coworker just so that I could finally share my category structure with a real life person and looking forward to my next fresh start on January 1st, 
hashtag Ernie style. Best wishes to you both and keeping the budget nerd content coming. I love to see that. That's so cool. So cool. So nerdy. Thanks, Marie. That's awesome. Thanks, Marie. That's so cool. My YNAM win is coming from Megan. Megan says, I just took a new job with a significantly lower salary, but much better overall satisfaction. When I chatted with my financial planner today, I said, I'm not worried about the cash flow at all. And she replied, most people I'd worry a little with this big of a jump, but not you. You are a pro budgeter and your only debt is your mortgage. Thank you, YNAB. That had to be such a proud moment, right? You're like talking to the financial advisor. I got this. And they're like, yeah, you totally do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like you can handle this. Awesome. (laughs) Good job, Megan. Way to go, Megan. Way to go. All right. Well, that's all we got for you today. Be sure to leave in the comments or send us an email uh, if you have anything you want to share. Especially love to see what you're saving for. Uh, Until we see you again. Happy budgeting. All right. See you, folks. Happy budgeting. In and out. Oh, I start, right? I do. (laughs) (laughs) No, you are not. Welcome back to the show, nerd. (laughs) I knew. Welcome back to the show, nerd. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Ernie. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> oh no it's gonna be one of those <laughs> okay 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 i'm very mature hi i am Mer- <laughs> <laughs> oh no <sighs> oh, okay. oh i got tears in my eyes all right <laughs> Sorry. Should we stop the recording? Sorry.